Hello everybody, this is Howard the Teaser King coming to you with week 14 of college football. Um, had a nice week last week with the video. We have Nebraska over Maryland. My read on Maryland was correct. They have been terrible the last five, six weeks. Nebraska was starting to score. They put up 21 on Wisconsin. I knew they'd put up 28, 30 at least on, on uh, Maryland and they go and blow them out 56 nothing. That's what you're looking for. The change as we're going, teams getting a lot of injuries and they're becoming, they're playing bad or conversely teams that start playing very well. Uh, so that's really what the Nebraska one was all about. Um, what did I do on the lock last week? I don't remember. I think I had a pro lock. I hit Seattle and I lost Green Bay. Green Bay didn't, uh, I, I was surprised they were that bad and Frisco was that good. And that's really a lot of the, the hard uh, variables uh, that you're looking for. And that's why it's hard to bet these new coaches and the new quarterbacks. All of a sudden Frisco's got this defense and shuts out Green Bay. Where'd that come from? Seattle went and beat them. So it's not like they, they shut out everybody. So that was a very big surprise. But I hit the Seattle part of it. Um, I had two other strong plays in college, Nebraska and Air Force, and they both won. So it was definitely a kind of a mixed week. It was a hard week in the pros. There wasn't a lot there besides the Seattle game. And I, I thought the Green Bay game getting points. Uh, this week I have a college pro lock going, very strong lock, uh, Saturday, Sunday. And what we have going on in college now are two things. Teams trying to win the division and teams needing the game for the bowls. They, they have five wins. They need the sixth win to be bowl eligible. Noted teams are Nebraska, Michigan State, Boston College the Army, so any of these five win teams that got to get the six for bowling have a little more incentive, but keep in mind they're still not really good teams. That's why they've only won five games. So in one sense they need it, but can they get it? Other teams that we're looking at are teams that need the game to win a division, and I'll quickly read through them. Uh, Memphis, SMU, and Navy are all, uh, actually Memphis beat SMU and Navy, so they hold the edge, but they're all <clears throat> within a game of each other. So if Memphis were to lose and Navy win, Navy would grab the, <coughs> the lead there. Virginia and Virginia Tech, basically it's a playoff game to win the division. That's on uh, Friday. Baylor and Oklahoma basically both have to win, but I don't think I don't see them playing this week. I think they have one more game. But anyway, um, they're both in. They're both being their conference championship with the one loss. That's the screwy part about that division. They play each other again. Um, Minnesota and Wisconsin are playing for the Big Ten West. Florida Atlantic, Marshall, Western Kentucky are playing for the Conference USA. I don't remember if it's the East or the West. The other side, Louisiana Tech, UAB, and Southern Miss are playing for that side of the conference. Central Michigan um, is playing for the, uh, it's them and Western, but if Central, I think Western beats Central straight up, Central has the game lead, so if Central wins, they would be the champs. Um, Boise and Air Force for the Mountain West. San Diego State and Hawaii on the other side, they're playing each other. Uh, oh, no, they already played. Uh, Hawaii's got Army. That's it. So Hawaii plays Army. Army needs the game for, for six. Hawaii needs the game to try to win their part of the conference. San Diego State on the other is also needs it. Hawaii just beat San Diego State, so Hawaii holds the tiebreaker. Utah and USC, which has already played. USC won. Utah has to win to win that side of the bracket and for any chance at the playoff. 
and then the Sun Belt, App State, Louisiana, Lafayette, and Arkansas State. And my boys, Louisiana, Lafayette, gotta love them. Very strong, so is App State. So those are the teams that need to play, but you've gotta be careful of the spread and who they're playing. Like Louisiana, Lafayette's got Louisiana, Monroe. I mean, it's not, you know, it's not a pushover game, let's say. So let me let me go to my game here, just to get that part of the information out. So now we're coming to the end. This is the last big week. Some rivalries. I, I don't know why USC UCLA was last week, and Cal Stanford, and then they're trying to call this week rivalry week. It, it just blows my mind. Anyway, about six or seven pretty strong games and one lock in my college. Um, let's get to it. I showed you my ticket last week. I'll show it to you again. It's basically, <coughs> here's my game. Michigan and Ohio State. I've already bet Ohio State plus the three and a half in Vegas in July. Here comes the real line, and Ohio State is an eight and a half or nine point favorite. Um, they they've clinched the Big Ten East, so they don't need the game to go to the Big Ten championship, but they do need the game to go to the playoff. And the real driving factor with Ohio State this year is they've been a cold shoulder out of the playoffs the last few years for Oklahoma. And they're pretty pissed off about it. As you can see, they've been killing everybody. Um, if we get into the game, Ohio State's won 14 out of the last 15, probably 19 of the last 20, I mean, probably all the way back to 2000. 19 years, Ohio State's probably won 18 or 17 of them. Um, and the only one Michigan won was when Ohio State had a freshman quarterback. I don't remember which one it was. And it was like his, you know, his first big game, and Michigan was at home and happened to pull it out miraculously because the quarterback on Ohio State missed a wide-open receiver. That would have won the game. But generally, Ohio State wins this game. They have the better talent. Uh, and this year they have a better quarterback. They got Young, better, the best defensive player in the NFL playing in college. Um, their defense is better. Michigan does not have that dominating defense. Um, offensively, Ohio State's a lot better, multi-dimensional. Michigan doesn't have a running game, which has surprised me for years that they always had good running games under not only Bo but under um, the next guy um, whatchamacallit the guy who won the national championship I, I can't remember his name and then Rich Rod basically just had a running quarterback and uh, Harbaugh has not gotten a good running back which just is shock I don't understand it there's something wrong because players are leaving uh, and going to other teams and um, I think Harbaugh's evaluation of talent is lacking, and his evaluation of the players are lacking. They all quit against Wisconsin. Wisconsin could hand it to me, and I'd run 60 yards for a touchdown. And Michigan quit, and I've never seen that. And I've been watching them since, you know, probably the late 60s. And I've never seen them not give 100%. They were really good bets. They were good dogs. You knew they'd play good. They played Bo Jackson good in the Sugar Bowl. In the Rose Bowls, they were competitive, even though they'd lose all the time because they didn't know how to throw the ball. Um, but they were always, you, it was always a very strong defense. They always played well, a lot of heart. I find Harbaugh does not recruit players with a lot of heart. They all want to quit and not play in the bowl game because they're afraid of getting hurt for the NFL play or draft. And a real player wants to play. You love to play. You want to do it. You don't sit out a bowl game 
I mean, that's disgraceful. And yet half his players sit out and, uh, oh, I got to get ready for the NFL draft. Well, you, the NFL draft, the NFL has watched you play this year. They know if you're draftable or not. And then I'm not seeing a whole lot of Michigan players do anything in the NFL when they get there. Much like Alabama's players. They get there and they don't do anything. Uh, they're very weak. The defensive players are very weak. The Julio Joneses are good and the Murray Coopers. Uh, they seem to be good. I haven't seen a quarterback do anything. The running backs, most of them are hacks. Uh, a couple of them are playing okay. But the real good ones are like from LSU or other schools. Um, who knows, the offensive and defensive linemen, you just, they're, in the, they're a dime a dozen, so that's not a big deal. Um, so my point here is when you look at the schools, who's better? So let's go inside the numbers to try to get flavor on it. So Michigan played two good teams, Wisconsin and Penn State, and they lost both, Wisconsin blowing them out. They beat Iowa, who's not the same team on the road as they are at home. They beat Notre Dame, who uh, I don't know what they are this year. They're okay. They did play Georgia pretty well, but not, you know, okay. I mean, they weren't great. Michigan blew them out. Give Michigan some credit for that. Um, but I don't know. They're, they're, then they beat Maryland, who's terrible. Um, and last week they beat Michigan State, or two weeks ago they beat Michigan State. Last week beating a good Indiana team, who, you know, who's, who's good. They're not great. They're not an A, but they're a good team. So let's look at the numbers. <coughs> How State <coughs> averages 49.4 <coughs> points a game, giving up 10. Um, they, they blew out Penn State pretty good last week. Penn State gives up 14 points a game. They put up a, I think it was what, what was the score of that game? Um, where are you, Penn State? Ohio State? Ah, 28-17. So they scored 28, should have scored more, kind of laid down in the fourth quarter and ran the ball to run the clock, which I hate that. Um, but they put up 28 on a 14-point on Penn State. So here's Penn State, score 35, give up 14. Here's Michigan, score 33, give up 16. So it's pretty similar, except for Penn State's got a better quarterback and a better defense. And I still like Harbaugh as a coach, but I think he's better for the NFL than he is in college. I think college has passed him by. Um, but anyway, that, that's where I see it. So Ohio State has beaten Wisconsin, who scores 35 and gives up 14. Penn State gives up 14, and they had no problem with these strong defensive teams. Uh, didn't play Iowa. Michigan State now gives up 23 a game, so what I thought was a straight defensive team giving up 10 points a game is now a they give up 23, and they don't score. So that's Michigan State's problem. But Ohio State handled them. Uh, granted, they beat Wisconsin and Penn State at home. Their big road, game, road win... Um, I don't know if they're a big road win. I think Nebraska, but that's not a big road win. Um, I don't know. They haven't really done it on the road per se, but they still did a good job, and they own Michigan. I know they're 14 and one, but they're probably more like 20 and two or 20 and three against them. Ohio State throws for 248, runs for 282. They got. Two good running backs, plus the quarterback is a good runner, and he's a good thrower. And they got Olive and a few other receivers that are just fantastic. Good offensive line, great defense, great defensive line, good secondary. I'm a little bit worried about the coach because he's tending to run the ball and not pile up the score, which is needed. Um, I don't know if you're laying 18 last week, he was disappointing. I wasn't. I had over, and I was disappointed because he didn't keep scoring. He had 28-17 early in the fourth. You should win that game 42-17 because you want to get into the ratings. Um, Ohio State, they, they run for two, 
282, throw for 248, 530, Michigan. Michigan throws for 248, the same as Ohio State, but they only run for 150. Ohio State runs for 280. There's a big difference, 130 yards more for Ohio State. That's critical. Let's look at the quarterback. If we go to the Big Ten. So let's look at Michigan's Shea Patterson. 11 games, 59% completion, 21 touchdowns, 5 interceptions, average yards 8.4. Justin Fields, Ohio State, 270% completion, 213 yards per game because they run the ball well. 33 touchdowns, 1 interception. So Michigan is not going to get the interception turnover. Ohio's the, you can almost guarantee it with Shea Patterson, uh, only 21 touchdowns and five interceptions. They've come on a little bit lately, but, you know, the biggest game was the Notre Dame game at home where they won. But as we can see, Notre Dame's not, not very good this, well, for Notre Dame, they're not like one of these strong, like LSU type of teams or Clemson, or they're, they're definitely a step lower, so not sure but Ohio State's right there um, so in conversely let's look at Penn State Sean Clifford to get it to get a feel of what's going on here now he throws for 229 a game so does this is amazing they both Patterson and Clifford both throw for 59 percent both throw 229 a game both have 8.4 averages Clifford throws 22 touchdowns with six picks Patterson 21 and 5. So it's almost like they're playing Penn State, but they don't have the running attack. Now, keep in mind, last week, Clifford didn't even play. He played the first quarter, I think, and got hurt. And in came the backup, who basically just ran the ball. So let's keep that in mind, too. Um, you got Young, so and the defensive line is going to disrupt everything. Let's look at the numbers. Get to the Big Ten. Ohio State nine and two this year. Three and one is a road favorite. One and three against Michigan as a home dog. You're not going to see it. They're very rarely a home dog. They are four and two as a home favorite. Three and three against. Seven and four with the number. Six and five against. Uh, if we go back to eighteen. We've got Michigan, again, not a not a home dog. Nine and four is a home favorite. Six and seven against Ohio State. Seven and three. If you take eighteen and nineteen as a road favorite, eighteen and six overall. Six and four against as a home favorite. Now keep in mind when they're when they're the favorite on the road, they're laying 25, 30, 35 points. That's not the case here. Let's go back to seventeen through nineteen. And Ohio State 13 and four is a road favorite, nine and eight against Michigan 11 and seven is a home favorite. One and all is a home dog. One and all bet against is a home dog. Here's an interesting stat. Michigan as a dog is five and0 against since 2017. And let me let me go back. Let's go to 2015. And see if we can get Michigan as a dog a little bit more. Okay, Michigan is okay. Michigan was a dog quite a bit when we go back. Uh, 11, 12, 13, 14. Uh, this only goes to 17. We'll do 2015. So this is uh, 2015 through 2019. So this gives you five years of trends. Michigan 10 and 2 is a home dog. Like that's a lot of home dogs. 8 and 4 against. Um, so they were getting better. I believe this is Harbaugh in 15. Not sure. Ohio State 10 and 5 is a road favorite. 8 and 7 against. Ohio State 43 and 16. But again, they're laying such big numbers. 
Michigan 10 and 2 as a home dog. That's incredible. They were a home dog 12 times in 15, but when you get to 16, let's see what 16 was. Michigan again. Well, they're 6 and 0 against us. So let's use 16 as the guideline. 1 and 0 is a home dog, 2 and 3 against as a road dog. Michigan 1 and 0 against as a home dog, 5 and 0. So Michigan is a dog, 6 and 0 against. Ohio State 16 and 7, 13 and 10 against. So again, Ohio State mostly 20 30 point favorites. So what's key here is the line is only eight and a half or nine you can get Ohio State minus two and a half and that's the trigger here if Ohio State was 17 point favorites this would be a Michigan play getting 23 and you'd hold your breath going eh, I hope uh, maybe they'll keep it close because it's a big rivalry um, in this case they're laying two and a half three you're getting it very all they got to do is win basically and normally this is a dog series so you got two conflicting trends the dog has been the play forever since the 60s but Ohio State's won 14 and they're 14 and 1 so what you have here is Michigan and 15 I don't think it's enough I think the line at eight and a half is only two and a half is really the play in this. Uh, the over under here is 49. And basically, I, I feel that that's a pretty low. I think that's an over. I think I would go over 43. That's 23 to 20. I think Ohio State, like I said last week, I'll put up in the 30s. I was surprised they didn't get to 30 against Penn State. They got 28. Oh, the, goal, the quarterback fumbled at the goal line in the first quarter, and I knew that would come back to haunt me. Um, they just ran out. They didn't, you know, Penn State got a couple of quick scores on some turnovers. Otherwise, it's 28 to nothing, uh, 28 to 3 or something. Um, so if Ohio State doesn't turn that ball over here, if they keep away from the fumbles, you know, they should score... I'd say be at least 35 points in this game. Michigan looks like they can throw the ball a little better, provided they have time, and they're not going to have it with this with Young. He's so strong. Um, he'll interrupt Patterson, who doesn't like pressure. Uh, I remember Patterson growing up when he was a freshman at Mississippi, or maybe he was a sophomore, but he was new. It was the first time I ever heard of him. And right away, I'm, you know, I like to look at the quarterbacks, touchdowns to interception ratio, who's hot. In his first four games, he played nobody, right? High school teams, uh, you know, Louisiana, Monroe, Arkansas State type of games. Uh, and Old Miss put up a lot of points, putting up 30, 40 points a game. He had like 16 touchdowns and one or two interceptions. I'm going, well, this kid looks pretty good. Ah, then what happened? Here comes Alabama, here comes Auburn, here comes LSU, and guess what he did? Nothing. Pulled the Jarrett Goff. No touchdowns, plenty of picks, 40 points turned into 10. That's what happens, uh, you know, when you play the better teams, the Alabamas, the LSUs, who weren't as strong offensively but always had that great defense, and the Auburns and maybe an occasional Florida or Georgia. Um, Seems everybody in the SEC does that, except for Alabama, plays Florida, or Georgia. Gotta hate those scheduling things. Anyway, so I knew he's a choke, basically. Against the better teams, he folds. And this year, what did he do? He folded against Penn State. He kind of came out at the end, but they still lost. Um, Michigan started playing well in the second half. Where were they in the first half? Why, why did they start in the second half? And not in the first half, and then they let that big touchdown pass go. So if the game is even remotely close, Ohio State will definitely pull it out. Chase Patterson will never pull out a tight game against Ohio State. doesn't have it in him. Um, they're not going to blow him out. But I do see points. Uh, Michigan's defense is not 
that's strong. They're not shutting out people. They're not holding them to 10. They're probably a 20, uh, 25 point defense. Here comes Ohio State. So I'm looking at at least 35 from Ohio State. Michigan should score. Um, but as tough as this defense is on Ohio State, see, it's a double edged sword. Not only they got a good quarterback and he runs well, and they got good runners, and they got great receivers, and a great line, and a coach who's imaginative, and they, you know, when he goes for it on fourth and two, they make it all, mo almost all the time. Um, the way they killed Wisconsin was just, at that time, Wisconsin was shutting out everybody and just laid you know, a hammer on Michigan. Um, and, and Ohio State just blew them out. Wisconsin's defense at the time is much better than Michigan's is. Penn State's defense is probably the same as Michigan's. Um, so it's, it's a relatively, like they're playing Penn State, which they just won 28-17, which the quarterback doesn't fumble a half inch away, it's 35. And if they needed a touchdown at the end, so it would have been 42. And then Penn State puts up 17, but really you had you had uh, the touchdown, they fumble, they score again, they fumble again, they kick a field goal, and then that was it. Now, again, their their quarterback got dinged, and believe me, Michigan's better have their backup <coughs> ready <coughs> Dylan McCafferty. Anyway, <coughs> very windy day here. I'm close to Ann Arbor, very windy, um, but I don't think it'll be windy Saturday. If there's a huge rain and windstorm on Saturday, bet the game under. Uh, at this point, I'm going with Ohio State minus two and a half. Extremely strong. Uh, definitely put it with the locks. Definitely put it with your strong plays. You want to play a five-team teaser. Um, I mean, if Ohio State played LSU, it would be a hell of a game, and I couldn't say LSU would uh, would beat them. I think Ohio State would would kill Alabama. Why? Because they can. They have Young who can just shut out their, their offense, right? You know, Tagliavua won't have a chance against this guy. Um, and I, and I, I, you can't stop this Ohio State can run and throw a good quarterback. Uh, now he hasn't been in a big game on the road. He's been in little games on the road. Um, so he's got lucky there. But at this point, I'm not really worried about him. He'll probably throw an interception just because, you know, it's Michigan. But I think they'll just, they'll be, they'll be very methodical, and I don't think they're going to, if they get a chance in the fourth quarter to pile it on, they're going to pile it on. They're not going to, you know, run the clock and win by 17 and say, oh, that's good. No, they'll, uh, they'll win by at least, I'm going to say by 17, 15, 14 to 17 points. Let's say 35-17 roughly will be my score. Um, probably the over-under is too low. I, I think 43, if the weather is good, is probably, uh, I would think, an easy over. So right now I'm taking Ohio State minus 2.5. I don't have to think about the over because talking to you guys, I think it's, it's really uh, probably a real good play there. It's just tough when you have a team like Ohio State. Like, How do you play overs and unders? And the best way to play over and unders is you bet under on the Bears. No offense, great defense. That's the teams you want in an under. And they play Tennessee. Great defense, no offense. And then in college, it's like Cal. Great defense, no offense. Those are the unders. The problem with like an Ohio State, who's an A team, a great scoring and a great defense, and Michigan could score in the 30s in a good defense in 16. You don't know which way the game's going to go. It could go over, but when you have great defenses, it could go under. You do get the turnovers. It is more field goals generally. Um, so and from that standpoint, you just don't know. You know, you get that turnover at the goal line, and there's just not as many chances. So that's my point. Uh, I don't think the home field means much in this series, although I think Ohio State definitely wins more at home but you know back in the 70s and 80s well the Archie Griffin years Ohio State won them all and then Michigan started winning and they could win they beat them 22 nothing I remember in 1978 or 76 or something like that they beat them 22 nothing as a dog 
uh, in Ohio. So it does happen, but it's more, I'm looking at Ohio State winning 14 of the last 15. When I made the bet with the ticket at the Venetian, I said, you got the wrong team favored. And this is July, and I says, the Ohio State should not be favored, and the, there should not be the dog in this game. They won 14 out of 15. And the guy looks at me and kind of like, well, who, who the fuck are you, kid? Well, what do you know? Or we made the line, Michigan minus three and a half. And, um, okay, I got three and a half, and the spread's eight and a half. So I'm laying two and a half in a, in a teaser bet, but here I got three and a half without the teaser. So uh, that, that's what I'm looking at. So um, this is definitely an Ohio State game. They have no problem winning in Michigan. And that's what I look at. Can they win at the other place? So, yes, they can go on the road and win. Um, I have a good six, seven other games where they're basically pretty much two, two team, two rivalries. If you get the home dog, it's sweet. I like the dog in a lot of these rivalries. Last week, Cal against Stanford. Um, uh, USC, UCLA, I went over because basically <laughs> neither team has a defense. Um, and so you got a lot of that. I remember a quick story in, in the mid-70s. Um, I had made 25 teaser bets. Um, all the rivals, Michigan, Ohio State, Washington, Washington State, Arizona, Arizona State, uh, you know, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, every rival that was on the book, Stanford, Cal, Duke, North Carolina, and I won 22 out of, out of I was 22-1 and one on my teasers. I won a ton, especially back in the 70s. And the bookie said, uh, sorry, I'm going out of business. I can't take your bets anymore. And so I, I basically buried my bookie. And all I did was really take all the dogs in all the rivalry games, which seemed very easy. It was like, oh, yeah, you know, they're pretty washed to wash the state. I'll take Give me the dog, Oregon, Oregon State, give me the dog. And at that time, there wasn't, you know, they were all pretty closely bunched. And you take the dog, and they all won because the rivalries, the dogs generally have a good chance. Like Clemson, South Carolina, no. This Ohio State, Michigan. Michigan still might cover with the 15. It could be a 13, 14 point win. Um, but basically, that's what happened. And. You know what my thought was? Here's how I think. I said, why would the guy let me go? I'm the goose that lays the golden eggs. I won all these games. All the guy has to do is bet my games. I mean, I was, I was killing them every week. And um, so that was it, 22-1. and one. The guy's like, forget it. I, I'm, not, I'm not being your bookie anymore. I can't beat you. And I'm like, but you should join me. You should take who does Howard have and bet them. But the bookie doesn't think like that. He thinks everybody's going to lose. So, oh, wait, you're not losing, so I don't want you. Instead of going, instead of understanding, I can pick. I'm doing it week in and week out. I buried the guy. That's so how you move on to the next bookie at that, at that point. Uh, this is in the 70s. So that's what happens. Anyway, that's my story. So this is a very live tease the dog. Last week, Kale against Stanford killed. The dog was good. Um, North Carolina, Duke. Duke was the dog. They were good. Um, here you got Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. You got Alabama, Auburn. I don't know what to think about Alabama, Auburn. See, this is the problem in the pros. You got a new quarterback, you have no idea. And you don't know how good he is. You don't know if you can trust them. They're at Auburn. My hunch is Auburn wins the game because Auburn's... <laughs> played Florida, they played Georgia, they played LSU. Auburn has a hell of a schedule. And this is what, what I get upset about when they talk about the playoff and go, well, a one-loss Alabama team is better than a one-loss Utah team. And I'm like, how do you figure who's Alabama played? But a three-loss Auburn team is, is at this point better than a one-loss Alabama team because of who they play. They, they played Florida, Georgia, LSU. Now they're going to play Alabama, and they beat Oregon. And you're like, how is Alabama with one loss playing nobody better than a team who played five strong top ten teams 
and won a few of them and lost a few of them. It just doesn't, you know, make a whole lot of sense in, in the way these guys think. All right, www.teaserking.com should be a big Thanksgiving week. Uh, I have the pros tomorrow. I played two games, so you can have make some money watching uh, watching the football tomorrow, eating the turkey. Um, so happy Thanksgiving. I wish everybody uh, good health and good profit. Uh, www.teacherking.com. And we're on the Buckeyes side. Take the Buckeyes, lay the two and a half.